I lost my boat and so the crossing had died. And how does someone lose their boat? This is not, not so difficult. Uh, I never thought that this was so easy. Jürgen is a marathon runner with 30 to date. He was on his way to run the race of his dreams, sailing around the Atlantic from Germany with a stop for the holidays in Jamaica, where his wife planned to meet him. But as all of us sailors know, rarely do things go according to plan. A day before setting off to cross the ocean from Indelo Bay, Jürgen ran aground. I'm here uh, because I wanted to cross the Atlantic from here to the Caribbean, but this did not happen because I lost my boat and so the crossing had died. I came here on the 10th of November and have been here some days. It's a lot of wind here. The Mandela Marina was very full because all the boats for the ARC Plus regatta were inside. So my plan was to anchor outside where a lot of other boats anchor. You only have to look where you put your anchor because there are a lot of abandoned ships and wrecks and you have to look what you do. I did. So I have been here eight days and then my anchor slipped on one day because of a lot of wind and a lot of waves and when I put it on board I saw aha uh -huh, I had a big tire from a car on this anchor and I thought it was a good idea to look for a better place. I took a better place uh, right behind the wreck I used as a breakwater 50 meters behind this so this was sheltered and put on five meter depth 30 meters chain so this is cannot be <laughs> problem and then there were two days and two nights with uh, winds about 30 35 uh, maybe a little bit more but the anchor hold perfect and it was no problem to stay on board and see uh, what happened nothing happened then at the second day the wind decreased so that two people from another German gift they came with a dinghy to my boat and asked me to go to the marina to drink a beer because now it's a calm situation and a lot of people go with their dinghies to this bar to drink a beer or eat something or so and so okay I thought yes it's not a problem drank one beer one big beer <laughs> and in one hour or one and a half hour later we went back and then tried to take me to my boat and this boat was disappeared. We were searching for 15, 20 hours or uh, minutes or so, but we couldn't find so that we returned to their boat and there I got a telephone call from my wife from Germany. She was absolutely shocked. She told me she had a call from Bremen Maritime Rescue Center that the boat of her husband, my yacht, Pirelum, uh, was found drifted on the beach in this bay here. Seems as if nobody uh, was on board. I was informed of that of, from my wife in Germany that my boat was here one kilometer from this here. From at the beach, okay. Talked to the maritime police here in Mendelo and they asked me to come to the marina. These two German, very, very, very friendly sailors, they brought me to the marina. There was the maritime police waiting for me and we all went by the police car to the beach where the boat was in the waves and in the wind and it was there stranded and it was clear this is not very good situation for this boat. The first first moment my impulse was to take a very long and strong rope to the bow of my boat 
to take it out to the water, to the free open water or deep enough water. Uh, so the answer of the maritime police, a little bit disappointing. The tugs here uh, are not working at night. The only chance to get your boat out of this situation is to take it out of the water to the beach by a big crane. So I agreed to take to do this. But to take the crane to this position and to have the belts on this boat by the divers and the people who climbed on the boat and so on. This lasted hours. And so meanwhile the boat moved over one bar of rocks to the next and when finally this crane was fixed on the boat by the belts so that at the end when the boat came to the beach there were two tons of salt water also inside for me to enter the boat and to look inside it was shocking what had happened I couldn't imagine that it could slip and go this way uh, so fast. So we saw the boat had taken the whole anchor chain with it, but at the end the anchor itself was missing. And so the only explanation for this is the shackle between chain and anchor must have broken or opened. So, in normal case, there is no reason to break, but we don't know. This was a long night, and the next day was with protocol with maritime police and negotiations with the crane company and so on about what to do and what not to do and so. I came with this boat from northern Germany, from Kiel, to here, this is 2,200 nautical miles and I anchored with this equipment many, many times before, never ever been a problem on this equipment and every time, of course, when you take the anchor back on board, you make a check on your equipment and now sail on. Early in the morning, I had a telephone call to my insurance where I could hear that the insurance would pay no cent for this accident because I had left the area where I, I was uh, insured, which ended at 20 degrees north latitude. And this here, Mindelo, is about 17, 16, something. Three degrees and now payage of the insurance. I must say that, that I was very disappointed of this. The most of the ex uh, insurance have no problem with this and will pay instead. Not mine. Mine said no, we have not this in the contract so we cannot pay. And this is what I cannot understand, because if I had let this boat longer there, uh, it's absolutely sure that a big pollution would have had happened. I prevented this, and now I have to pay all this for myself. Okay. The name of the insurance is not so interesting for this, but... Mm, if somebody wants to know, you can take, send me a personal message. And now the boat is standing in the yard. The salt water is almost outside and the damage is undescribable. The insurance will not pay. There are some thousand euros for me to pay for the salvage and the situation I have now and the reparation uh, would be also 
not not easy and would be last very long. This is 46 years old Swedish Lauren Costa 32, so strong I do not know any better. Maybe it would be an endless story. So I decided not to repair the boat but to sell it or if not possible to sell it in parts. I'm so happy that I found one of the local guys here, very very nice, who bought the boat completely to make the reparation here and bring it to the sea again. I hope this will happen. I wanted to do this Atlantic Circle from Europe, Biscay, Spain, Madeira, Canaries, Cabo Verdes. I came until here last weekend. I had all the things on board with food, water and so on. And yeah, I'm 66, this is not so old. Maybe I could see in, in hours, uh, the solidarity of a lot, a lot, a lot of other sailors who were, everybody knows of this here and, and half the island, the locals and all the people there came and wanted to help and all these people are very sad of this for you and if one can help you, he will. Nobody has an idea what I ha should have done better because as a solo sailor you cannot stay on board every time. Sometimes you have to go to the land. <laughs> this is fate or random or, or nobody knows and this can happen to everybody. I only can say okay guys and girls look at your anchorage equipment look at your technique what you have and everything has to be okay but you see even if things can happen and if this is the case yes it's it happens you have to live with this uh, and so i'm not hurt i'm not dead uh, i i was drinking a, a beer <laughs> this was the most expensive beer of my whole life but okay life goes on and i i see so much of love and and uh, support and and solidarity and so on if this is positive very very positive experience of course jürgen is a man of truly great stature and resilience a marathon runner whose race grounded to a halt his dream was shattered, but not his sailing spirit. I believe we will see each other again. <laughs>